This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're at T-minus 3 hours, 30 minutes in holding. T-minus 3 hours, 30 minutes in holding in a planned built-in hold of one hour's duration. We ended this hold as planned 10 minutes ago, 6.50 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. As we came into the built-in hold, we really don't have any work to do because we're on time as far as the countdown is concerned at this point for Apollo 12. The Apollo 12 crewmen, astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean are up in the crew quarters and should have sat down for breakfast about 10 minutes ago. All the propellants are aboard the launch vehicle at this time and they are stable. We are go for Apollo 12 at this time, T-minus 3 hours, 30 minutes, and holding in a built-in hold. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're in our built-in hold, T-minus three hours, 30 minutes, and holding. We've now 13 minutes into the hold, the total duration of this hold, one hour. All our propellants are aboard the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. We've loaded more than three quarters of a million gallons of liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen aboard the three stages during some four and a half hours in the count earlier this morning. The prime pilots for the Apollo 12 mission, astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean, were awakened in the crew quarters uh, just a few minutes less than an hour ago. Uh, after uh, getting up, they went down the hall uh, for a brief medical examination. It lasted some 10 or 15 minutes. They were examined by Drs. Alan C. Harder and John T. Teagan. Following the brief examination, Dr. Uh, Harder described the crew as being in great shape and everything is normal. The crew is now uh, sitting down to breakfast. Uh, they have some visitors for breakfast this morning. Their menu is the normal astronaut fare of orange juice, steak, eggs, coffee, and toast. Joining the astronauts for breakfast, and we'll have a final report on this a little later on when we confirm all the visitors, but joining the astronauts for breakfast is uh, Tom Stafford, the Apollo 10 commander who is now uh, chief of the astronaut office and Tom in fact awoke the astronauts this morning. Deke Slayton who is director of flight crew operations. Astronaut Jim Irwin who is one of the backup pilots. Mr. Chuck Tringali who is director of the crew training for the Apollo 12 mission. Astronaut Paul Weitz. Paul Weitz is the backup, uh, actually the support lunar module pilot and also acts as Stoney or the capsule communicator here in the final in the firing room uh, during the countdown. And an, an, an additional uh, member of the guests for breakfast is Jim McDivitt. Jim McDivitt, of course, the uh, commander of the Apollo 9 mission, but now acting in the capacity of Apollo program director at the Manned Spacecraft Center. So the crew sitting down for breakfast while we're in the hold. All our propellants are stable with the launch vehicle. We are go as far as our launch time of 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is concerned. Weather conditions will be acceptable for launch under the latest forecast. T-minus three hours, 30 minutes, and holding in a built-in hold. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus three hours, 30 minutes in a built-in hold. We're holding at T-minus three hours, 30 minutes. We have now been some 28 minutes into this built-in hold. It was declared at 6.52 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, one hour duration. All aspects of the countdown for Apollo 12 are still going satisfactorily at this time. The prime crew of astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean finishing up breakfast at the crew quarters here at the Kennedy Space Center, which is some eight or nine miles from the launch pad. The astronauts just before breakfast were given a weather briefing, and this is the weather status as given to the astronauts uh, by Tom Stafford. The forecast for the local area calls for scattered clouds and uh, an altitude of 2,500 feet, a broken ceiling at 10,000 feet. Winds in the Cape Kennedy area will be from the southwest, 15 knots with gusts to 25 knots. 
A temperature of about 67 degrees is expected at lunchtime. There can be uh, some remote chance of some sprinkles of rain, but that is the forecast as it stands at this time. And as far as this forecast is concerned, it is very acceptable for a launch attempt this morning. Elsewhere on the round the world track, the weather is ex acceptable. However, we do have a rather extensive frontal area in the extreme western Atlantic where at its peak the winds are up to 25 knots with seven foot seas. The remainder of the Atlantic Ocean track is acceptable also. Pacific also acceptable. In worst cases we do have some winds up to 18 knots with five foot seas. This is in an area northeast of Hawaii. However, despite uh, these high ranges in several locations, it is reported that weather conditions both here at the Cape and around the world track are acceptable for a launch attempt this morning. The propellants are still stable inside the Saturn V space vehicle. We'll be standing by for the closeout crew to head up to the White Room at the 320-foot level uh, a short time. This will occur while we're still in the hold. Uh, in a matter of minutes, it is expected that the Apollo 12 crew will go down the hall from their crew quarters to the suit room to don their space suits as they make their final preparations for their departure, which should occur uh, some 40 minutes or so, 40 to 45 minutes from this time. We remain in our built-in hold at 3 hours 30 minutes and holding. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We're still in our built-in hold, T-minus, three hours, 30 minutes, and holding. We'll be resuming our countdown at 7.52 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Prime crew for the Apollo 12 mission, astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean have completed breakfast and have now gone down the hall to the suit room where they will don their spacesuits and perform final checkouts in preparation for their departure for the launch pad, which is due some 40 minutes or so from this time. In the meantime, we're continuing to monitor the status of the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle here in firing, two of, firing room two of the launch control center. Both the uh, liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen supply in, all, in the three stages are stable at this time. In the meantime, we have now sent the closeout crew down to the launch pad, a team of four men who have taken the elevator up to the 320-foot level and have now reopened the hatch of the Apollo 12 spacecraft. The hatch has been secured since we began the propellant loading back shortly after we resumed our count at the T-minus nine-hour mark this morning. At this point, the backup command module pilot, astronaut Alfred Warden, has gone aboard the spacecraft and he will conduct uh, a number of uh, pro preparatory checks in readiness for the arrival of the launch crew, which should come at about uh, ingress at about T minus two hours and 40 minutes in the countdown. Warden is aboard now. He'll go through some switch list checks and perform uh, some lighting checks, uh, the cabin lighting, and will perform also some environmental control system checks in preparation for the arrival of the astronauts. Uh, to give a quick rundown once again on the status of the flight crew, they were awakened as planned in the countdown at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Standard Time this morning. This was at T-minus 4 hours 17 minutes in the count. They went down the hall and took a brief medical exam, were declared in great shape with everything normal by Dr. Alan C. Harder. They then sat down uh, to breakfast. The breakfast was the normal astronaut menu of orange juice, steak, eggs, coffee, and toast. The astronauts had uh, five guests for breakfast. They included Tom Stafford, who is now chief of the astronaut office, who actually awakened the crew this morning. Astronaut uh, Jim Irwin, who is uh, the backup lunar module pilot. Mr. Chuck Tringali, who heads the training team for the Apollo 12 mission, as far as the astronaut crew is concerned. Jim McDivitt, uh, who is the commander of the Apollo 9 mission, but now is Apollo program director for the Manned Spacecraft Center. And finally, astronaut Paul Weitz. Paul Weitz is the backup, or uh, the correction, the support lunar module pilot, and also acts as Stoney. That's the call sign for the capsule communicator here in the firing room during the countdown. Those were the five guests for breakfast. The astronauts now checking out their suits in the suit room at the crew quarters here at the Kennedy Space Center. We are still go on our countdown at this time. 
Weather forecast still uh, very acceptable for launch despite a ceiling, a broken ceiling at about 10,000 feet. We're still in our hold, three hours, 30 minutes in holding, expecting to resume in about 15 minutes from this time. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Our count, Mark, T-minus, three hours, 30 minutes, and counting on the Apollo 12 mission. All go at this time. We resume the count at 52 minutes past the hour. The Apollo 12 pilots still in the suit room at their crew quarters here at the Kennedy Space Center at this time. We expect them to depart the quarters in about 17 minutes or so on the trip of some seven or eight miles to the launch pad. We are go with our countdown at this time. Now three hours, 29 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. T minus three hours, 21 minutes, 26 seconds and counting. We're on time as far as our count is concerned for Apollo 12. The prime crew for the mission, astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean finishing up their suit checks in the suit room at nearby their crew quarters here at the Kennedy Space Center. We expect them to be departing from the crew quarters about 10 minutes from this time to start a trip of about nine miles that will wind up on the 320-foot level at Complex 39, the location of their Apollo 12 spacecraft. Astronaut Al Warden, the backup command module pilot, is in the Apollo 12 spacecraft at this time, busy with preliminary work and preparations, checking out the various switches in preparation for the arrival of the flight crew. We are go at three hours, 20 minutes, 37 seconds, and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. We passed the three hour, 18 minute mark in the count. Now three hours, 18 minutes, correction, three hour, 19 minute mark in the count. We're at 3, 18, 49 at this time and counting. Still aiming toward our planned liftoff at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The crew now about seven minutes away from their departure according to the countdown procedures. They'll leave the crew quarters at about 10 minutes past the hour and take about an 18 minute trip to the launch pad. Right now it appears that we're having a, a rainstorm here in the launch pad area. However, the weather forecast still stands as acceptable uh, for 11.22 a.m., which is our launch time. Acceptable for launch at that time. We anticipate a broken ceiling at about 10,000 feet, scattered clouds at about 2,500 feet. The winds will be from the southwest and they will be acceptable for launch. Al Warden, the backup command module pilot, busy in the spacecraft uh, at this time at the 320-foot level, making final preparations for the arrival of the flight crew. Warden's uh, checkouts include activating the caution warning system of the spacecraft, securing the S-band communication system. He uh, injects some chlorine into the water system, a final fix on the water to uh, adjust it for flight. Other work concerns checking out the suit circuit. This is the direct oxygen feed that goes into the suit circuits of the three suits of the astronauts once they do come aboard. He also checks the lighting in the cabin to assure that it's in a flight mode and uh, remove some of the pyro arm switches uh, in preparation for the astronaut arrival. At the present time, we have four people in the white room, in addition to Command Module Pilot Warden, who is, of course, the backup Command Module Pilot. We have the pad leader, a Command Module Technician, and a Quality Control uh, Representative. We will wind up uh, with nine people uh, in the white room. That is the maximum that will occur once the crew comes aboard, since they will be accompanied by two suit technicians when they come up to the 320-foot level. We are standing by uh, from uh, monitoring the status of the count here in the firing room two at the Launch Control Center and the reports we're getting from spacecraft uh, test conductor Skip Chauvin at the spacecraft checkout facility in the manned spacecraft operations building, all still going well. We're now at three hours, 16 minutes, 26 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. The Apollo Saturn launch control, three hours, 12 minutes and counting. The Apollo 12 crew now departing the crew quarters, boarding their transfer van, ready for the nine mile trip to the launch pad. We give about 18 minutes for the crew to do go from their crew quarters to the launch pad where they'll board their Apollo 12 spacecraft at the 320 foot level. 
We had it logged at 10 minutes past the hour when the Apollo 12 crew members, astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean, departed from the quarters and boarded their van. Although it appears not to be raining uh, at the crew quarters area, we appear to have a pretty good rainstorm going on in the vicinity of the launch pad at this time. However, it is not interfering with any of our operations in the count. The weather forecast is still go for launch as far as our 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time T0 is concerned. The crew uh, now aboard the transfer van. We expect they will be departing shortly for the trip to the pad. The three astronauts are accompanied by two suit technicians, and the procedure of boarding the spacecraft will be as follows. The first astronaut aboard will be the commander, astronaut Pete Conrad who sits in the left-hand seat. He will be followed by the lunar module pilot, Alan Bean, who sits in the right-hand seat. While these first two crewmen are going aboard, the third member of the crew, astronaut Dick Gordon, will remain in the elevator at the 320-foot level. He will be uh, in the company of a suit technician, and as the progress of the second astronaut, Alan Bean, is accomplished as he's brought aboard, Dick Gordon will be called across the swing arm and will be the third member of the crew to come aboard. The transfer van now departing from the crew quarters at the Manned Spacecraft Operations Building here at the Kennedy Space Center on the start of the trip to the launch pad. We're at three hours, 10 minutes, 20 seconds and counting. We're go on the Apollo 12 countdown at this time. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 2 hours, 58 minutes, 54 seconds, and counting. The Apollo 12 crewmen aboard their transfer van now going down the last leg on their trip to the launch pad. They're on the main road now. They've gone past the Launch Control Center and are heading down. Uh, they'll be coming up shortly on the Mobile Service Structure Park site, and then they'll make the turn toward Pad A. It's uh, about 18 minutes that we give... Uh, the transfer van to make the trip from the crew quarters to the launch pad. Once the astronauts do arrive at the pad, they'll board uh, one elevator that will take them inside the mobile launcher and a second high-speed elevator that will take them up uh, the mobile service structure to the 320-foot level from where they will board their Apollo 12 spacecraft. The backup command module pilot, Al Warden, is aboard the spacecraft at this time as he has been for the last 30 or 40 minutes or so performing uh, final checks of switches uh, and the water and environmental control system in preparation for the arrival of the crew. Standing, uh, standing by in the white room awaiting the arrival of the astronauts are the pad leader, a command module technician, and a quality control uh, representative. We expect the crew to board the spacecraft starting at the two hour, 40 minute mark in the count. This is the way it is according to the book, which would be some 17 minutes from this time. It could be earlier depending on their arrival. We had some rain in the launch pad area. It's difficult to tell whether, we still, whether it is still raining at this time in the pad area. However, uh, the weather forecast still stands as acceptable for our launch attempt at 11.22 a.m. We're continuing to monitor the status of the launch vehicle here in the firing room at the uh, launch control center. All is well with the countdown at this time. We are go for Apollo 12. Two hours, 57 minutes, three seconds and counting. This is launch control. Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus two hours, 53 minutes, five seconds and counting. The prime crew for Apollo 12 now has arrived at the launch pad. The three crewmen are aboard the first of two elevators they'll use to get to the 320-foot level. They're now joined in the elevators by the two suit technicians. The first elevator will take them to the A level inside the mobile launcher. Once inside, they will walk uh, through the A-level of the mobile launcher to catch one of the two high-speed elevators that are located uh, at the A-level. These elevators can travel at 600 feet per minute. They will take the uh, astronauts, all three crewmen, up to the 320-foot level from where Conrad and Bean will cross the swing arm to approach the white room where their spacecraft is located. The astronauts now going into the A-level of the mobile launcher. They step across a bulkhead, walk down a short hall, and then aboard a waiting elevator. This elevator is controlled by the capsule communicator here in the firing room, who is astronaut Paul Weitz for this mission. 
the astro the 11 the Apollo 12 astronauts now going down the hall they'll board the high-speed elevator and should be up uh, near the spacecraft shortly two hours 51 minutes 48 seconds and counting this is launch control this is Apollo Saturn launch control T minus two hours 48 minutes 56 seconds and counting the astronauts have arrived in the white room that is the spacecraft commander Pete Conrad and the lunar module pilot Ann Allen Bean the third member of the crew astronaut Dick Gordon will stand by in an elevator located on the mobile launcher at the 320 foot level he is in the company of a suit technician and will be called across the swing arm after his two colleagues go aboard the spacecraft commander Pete Conrad now boarding the spacecraft he sits in the left hand seat we have him over the sill at 33 minutes past the hour 8.33 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and Pete Conrad is aboard the Apollo 12 spacecraft. Astronaut Al Warden, the backup command module pilot, will be a fourth astronaut in the spacecraft for some 30 or 40 minutes. He's inside now, and he will give a hand in seating all three astronauts in their couches. Warden will work in the front of the spacecraft, that is in front of the couches, giving a hand while the suit technician works in the rear, that is behind each couch. So at certain points we will have actually five people in the spacecraft, the three crewmen, the backup command module pilot Al Warden, and just inside the spacecraft the suit technician. And Warden and the suit technician will uh, give a hand in getting the astronauts uh, seated snugly into their couches and help them with their preliminary checks. Alan Bean, the lunar module pilot, who'll sit in the right-hand seat, uh, should be coming across the sill shortly. Dick Gordon, as uh, we reported, still standing by in an elevator on the other side of the Apollo access arm. The spacecraft test conductor has just made a communications check and received a cheery good morning, good morning from Pete Conrad, the spacecraft commander. That is our status at this time. We're two hours, 47 minutes and counting, theoretically some seven or eight minutes ahead of the planned procedure time for astronaut ingress. All still, still going well at this time with Conrad aboard, uh, Bean standing by in the white room, and Dick Gordon uh, still awaiting the call in the elevator at the 320-foot level. This is launch control. Launch control, the spacecraft commander, astronaut Pete Conrad, now fitted snugly into his couch on the left-hand seat of the Apollo 12 spacecraft, and the space, uh, space suit technician and backup command module pilot Al Warden now giving astronaut Alan Bean a hand in checking him out. In each case, as an astronaut uh, is uh, brought in to the spacecraft, he goes through the same sequence, that is to hook up a communications cable then actually hook the astronaut and his uh, uh, pressurized garment into the suit circuit system of the spacecraft to bring the oxygen flow uh, to the suit. This is followed by some uh, communications checks and uh, finally we get some preliminary medical readouts on each astronaut and in a final uh, check to assure that everything is okay, the spacecraft conduct test conductor in each case asked the astronauts to check some panels nearby to assure that as he came aboard he might not have inadvertently hit some of the switches. So in each case we have a switch list check, a brief one. We expect that the spacecraft test conductor, Chip, uh, Skip Chauvin, will be calling the third member of the crew, Dick Gordon, to come across the swing arm shortly. We'll be standing by. We appear to be right on time as far as our procedures are concerned. Uh, here in the firing room, the crew continuing to monitor the status of the Saturn V launch vehicle as we continue with crew ingress. We're now at 2 hours, 36 minutes, 26 seconds and counting. We are go for Apollo 12 on our launch attempt with the window starting and the window opening at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 2 hours, 28 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Still go with Apollo 12 at this time. At the 320-foot level at launch pad A, where the hatch for the Apollo 12 spacecraft is located, we now have the third member of the crew aboard. 
Dick Gordon, a command module pilot who sits in the middle seat of the spacecraft, uh, came aboard the spacecraft at 46 minutes past the hour. We boarded all three astronauts in a span of about 13 minutes. At this time, the spacecraft test conductor uh, talking with the crew in the white room and aboard the spacecraft, going through the final checks of getting astronaut Dick Gordon aboard, getting him checked into the couch, tied into the suit circuit system, having him check a few switches to ensure that he did not bump any uh, on the ingress activity. We still have the suit technician in the spacecraft, and uh, in front in the lower equipment bay is Al Warden also giving a hand as we go through the preliminary uh, checkout of the three pilots aboard. Uh, we'll make a, get a quick medical readout here shortly on Dick Gordon, and then a Houston flight. Uh, Mission Control Center Houston is standing by to perform some communication checks with the astronauts aboard the spacecraft. All still going well uh, with the count, Weather is go, and uh, we're still aiming toward our planned T-0 at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Two hours, 27 minutes, 29 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Broadcast van. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus two hours, 18 minutes, 35 seconds and counting. Still proceeding on schedule, in fact, a few minutes ahead of schedule in our preparations for the launch of Apollo 12. Our checkout in the spacecraft uh, command module going well at the 320 foot level. We've just had uh, Al Warden, who was uh, for a while the fourth astronaut aboard the spacecraft. He has just come out after giving the three prime pilots a hand on uh, their preliminary checkouts. We'll be ready in a short while here, perhaps a little ahead of time, uh, to close the hatch. And we'll be coming up with uh, some more command checks from the Mission Control Center in Houston. These are checks in which uh, Houston can send commands to the spacecraft, and the astronauts confirm that these commands have been received and uh, actually accepted by the spacecraft computer. This is a requirement, of course, for launch, that uh, following liftoff, if necessary, direct commands could be sent from the ground to update uh, the spacecraft computer. Our countdown still going normally here in firing room two, the crew continuing to monitor the overall status of the Saturn V launch vehicle, keeping a close eye on the various propellants aboard, and all our propellants are stable as the countdown continues. All still going well, the pad leader has just reported that he's ready to close the hatch, and it looks like hatch closure is coming up in a matter of seconds. The hatch being closed now at about five minutes past the hour. Uh, we seem to be progressing very well in our work up there at the 320-foot level with the three astronauts and their preliminary checkouts aboard Apollo 12. Two hours, 16 minutes, 57 seconds and counting. We are still go on Apollo 12. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus two hours, six minutes, 40 seconds, and counting. We're still proceeding on time, and in fact, a little bit ahead of the count as far as our procedures are concerned. The spacecraft commander, astronaut Pete Conrad, Con Conrad has just uh, completed uh, some busy uh, work concerned with the abort advisory system. This is a series of cue lights on a panel in front of him uh, that would indicate a difficulty, a problem requiring an abort during the early phases of flight. We checked out this system working with the launch operations manager, Paul Donnelly, here in the uh, firing room, who has the capability of recommending abort. Also, tests were accomplished by the spacecraft test conductor, Houston Flight. And those are the three, the uh, spacecraft test conductor, launch operations manager, and Houston Flight. They sent their abort recommendations, and Conrad confirms that he did, in fact, uh, receive the abort light indications during this test. Coming up next will be uh, bit of a milestone as far as the spacecraft checkout is concerned. This is the emergency detection system check, the EDS checks they're called. This is an exercise uh, with Pete Conrad working with both the spacecraft and launch vehicle crew to give a complete uh, checkout of the emergency detection system. We check all the various modes of the EDS to assure that the astronauts would get their proper cues aboard the spacecraft in the event anything went wrong down below. All the various abort modes are exercised and the various abort recommendations come to Conrad. 
This is a test of about 30 minutes duration. Uh, Pete Conrad is now uh, getting his panels ready for this test, and we expect to be getting it uh, shortly. All other aspects of the count going well. Our weather forecast still stands. A broken ceiling at about 10,000 feet. Scattered clouds about 2,500 feet. Temperature in the launch area about 67 degrees. The weather conditions are acceptable for a launch attempt this morning. Still going Apollo 12, T minus two hours, four minutes, 37 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus one hour, 58 minute, 56 seconds and counting. Still go on Apollo 12 at this time. The crew still working uh, aboard the spacecraft with the hatch closed and the support team in the white room area at the 320 foot level now proceeding to start the cabin purge and leak checks. What is accomplished during this period, of course, is once the spacecraft hatch is closed, we want to bring aboard into the cabin the 60 to 40 percent atmosphere of oxygen and nitrogen. This is the atmosphere that we fly with at liftoff inside the cabin. Of course, the three astronauts themselves are on their suit circuit and breathing 100% oxygen through that circuit. The cabin purge is going on at this time, and we will be keeping an eye on it to assure that we have reached the proper adjustments inside the cabin. Once that is completed, we'll perform some leak checks to assure that we are stable inside the cabin. Uh, astronaut Pete Conrad uh, will be busy working on the emergency detection system test, uh, talking with both launch vehicle and spacecraft checkout personnel as the EDS test, an overall check of the emergency detection system, continues. As reported, this is a rather lengthy test uh, in our countdown, lasting some 30 minutes or so. We're still going well, aiming toward our planned liftoff at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is Kennedy Launch Control, T minus one hour, 57 minutes, 27 seconds, and counting. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, at T minus one hour, 48 minutes, 55 seconds, and counting. We're still go with our countdown for Apollo 12 at this time, aiming toward our planned T zero of 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The spacecraft commander, astronaut Pete Conrad, still busy aboard the Apollo 12 spacecraft, going through the final checks of the various modes of the emergency detection system of the space vehicle. The other astronauts are keeping an eye on uh, activities inside the cabin as we continue our purge and leak checks. That is bringing the cabin atmosphere to the 60-40 oxygen-nitrogen uh, atmosphere that we desire for liftoff. The astronauts, of course, are breathing 100% oxygen uh, through their suit circuits. Our countdown picked up at the T-minus nine-hour mark at 1.22 a.m. Eastern this morning, and uh, we then proceeded here in the firing room to uh, begin the final uh, propellant loading of the Saturn V launch vehicle. As it stood on the pad at that time, it already had its RP-1 fuel aboard the first stage. Uh, however, uh, we spent four and a half hours or so bringing in more than three quarters of a million gallons of the cryogenic propellants, the liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. We started loading oxygen to all three stages from the top down and then uh, went into the final phase of the propellant loading, bringing the hydrogen fuel first aboard the second stage and finally aboard the S-4B third stage. All of this work was accomplished by the time we went into our planned built-in hold at T-8 minus three hours and 30 minutes. As far as the prime crew is concerned, after a good eight hours of sleep, they were awakened in the crew quarters by astronaut and chief of the astronaut office, Tom Stafford, at 6.05 a.m. Eastern this morning. The crew then went down the hall to take their customary a brief medical exam on launch morning. They were examined by doctors Alan C. Harder and John T. Teagan. Following the brief examination, Dr. Harder declared the astronauts were in great shape and that everything is normal. The crew then uh, received a weather briefing from Tom Stafford. His briefing uh, still stands at this time as far as the weather forecast is concerned. The astronauts were told that they would expect the following conditions at launch time. Scattered clouds in the Cape Kennedy area of about 2,500 feet. A broken ceiling at about 10,000 feet. We'd have winds from the southwest about 15 knots with gusts to 25 knots at temperature in the launch area of 67 degrees. 
all of these conditions are acceptable for a launch attempt. Whether on the round the world track, in some places a little rough, uh, in the western Atlantic uh, particularly, we have seven foot seas and winds up to 25 knots. However, uh, looking at all the abort contingency areas, weather is acceptable in those areas also for a flight attempt this morning. The astronauts uh, sat down to the normal uh, breakfast menu of steak, eggs, orange juice, coffee, and toast. They had five guests for breakfast. Uh, the guests included Tom Stafford, the backup lunar module pilot, astronaut Jim Irwin, uh, Jim McDivitt, who is the Apollo program manager at the Manned Spacecraft Center, astronaut Paul Weitz, and Paul Weitz is the support lunar module pilot for the Apollo 12 mission, and also sits in as the capsule communicator with a call sign Stoney here in the firing room. The, fi the fifth uh, man to join the group was Mr. Chuck Tringali. Mr. Tringali is head of the support training uh, group for the Apollo 12 crew. A sixth uh, individual in the room was a life-sized gorilla, from what we understand, a uh, stuffed gorilla uh, that was sent uh, to Pete Conrad by one of his friends. This gorilla uh, had been adopted as a mascot by the crew, and he was rigged up in a flight smock and a crash helmet seated on the side in the, uh, in the uh, breakfast room when the crew came in. The crew then uh, departed the quarters after donning and checking out their spacesuits at the appointed time, uh, 8.10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and proceeded to the launch pad up to the 310-foot level, where, in order, they boarded the spacecraft as follows. First, uh, the commander, Pete Conrad, who sits in the left-hand seat, followed about six minutes later by uh, astronaut Alan Bean, the lunar module pilot in the right-hand seat, and another seven minutes went by, and then Dick Gordon, the final member of the crew, came aboard, the command module pilot who sits in the middle seat. The hatch was then closed, and the countdown is proceeding satisfactorily since that time. We're at one hour, 44 minutes, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus one hour, 38 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Countdown still progressing satisfactorily at this time. We have completed that rather extensive emergency detection system checks with astronaut Pete Conrad uh, working the various checkouts with the launch vehicle and spacecraft crews here at KSC. We've gone through all the various abort modes uh, that could signal trouble to the astronauts on top of the Saturn V and we are now assured that that system is performing satisfactorily. In the meantime, we have completed the purge of the spacecraft cabin and have completed our leak checks. Uh, we know now that the cabin is on the 60% oxygen, 40% nitrogen environment that we want for liftoff. Once again, of course, the astronauts uh, inside their suits on the spacecraft suit circuit are breathing 100% oxygen, but the cabin atmosphere itself is the 60-40 combination. All still going well, one hour, 37 minutes, 58 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus one hour, 28 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. We are proceeding with the Apollo 12 countdown at this time, still aiming toward our planned T0 of 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. At this point in the countdown, the closeout crew at the 320-foot level at launch pad A now proceeding to break up the white room area. This is the area at the end of that Apollo access arm number nine, the arm that the astronauts used to go across from the mobile launcher to board their spacecraft a while ago. The spacecraft hatch has been closed. The cabin is now at its proper atmosphere. The astronauts have completed several vital tests already, one of them being the emergency detection system checks. Uh, these were performed by the spacecraft commander, uh, astronaut Pete Conrad, working with the launch vehicle and spacecraft teams here at KSC. This was uh, an extensive check out of the entire detection system that would uh, inform the astronauts of any abort conditions uh, during the powered phase of flight. Uh, Pete Conrad now gearing up for a special check that will occur shor shortly. This is a calibration of what we call a cue ball. It's an angle of attack meter located atop uh, the emergency escape tower, which is located, of course, on top of the command module. 
this angle of attack meter does give readouts to the uh, flight computer during the powered phase of flight and uh, Conrad is expected to work adjustments with the launch crew to calibrate that instrument shortly. Our weather uh, conditions still stand, our forecast is still go for launch. We expect winds from the southwest getting up to uh, gusts in the area of some 25 knots. Uh, a ceiling of about 10,000 feet broken is forecast. However, we are keeping a close eye on this weather front that is in the area. We are go for launch at this time, however. The astronauts have been up since 6.05 a.m. this morning. They're up uh, now coming up on about four hours and uh, have been working hard in the spacecraft on the final checkouts uh, since they came aboard uh, about 8.30 a.m., a little bit after 8.30 a.m. this morning. Uh, once the uh, checkout crew has completed their work up there on the swing arm, we will be ready to bring that swing arm back to a standby position, that is, remove it from the spacecraft. This is due to occur, according to the procedures, at the 43-minute mark in the countdown. All is still going well with our count, still a little bit of ahead of time, in fact, on the spacecraft checks as the countdown proceeds for Apollo 12. We are go at 1 hour, 26 minutes, 16 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus one hour, 19 minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Still proceeding with the Apollo 12 countdown on time at this time. We're aiming toward our projected T zero at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Astronaut Pete Conrad, the spacecraft commander, is now working with the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin, in preparation for some guidance and control checks that will be coming up in the spacecraft shortly. This is where Conrad uh, checks out the various systems uh, used uh, to fly the spacecraft in the space environment. He checks out that big engine below them on the service module to make sure that it will re gimbal that is, swing in response to commands either from the automatic uh, guidance system aboard the spacecraft or manually by the commander himself if required. He has his translational and rotational hand controllers that he uses in these various maneuvers and he will be exercising these shortly. We are keeping a close watch now on a weather front that is coming in toward us from the northwest. The launch operations manager, Paul Donnelly, just a short time ago, did advise Conrad that we're keeping a close eye on it. This weather front uh, does have some heavy rain and a little bit of lightning has been noted. An estimate could be that uh, we might get it in this area about noontime. Launch operations manager Donnelly informed Pete Conrad we hope to have them off in time and in time to avoid any difficulties with weather. Our forecast of a ceiling of 10,000 feet broken still stands for the liftoff time, but we're keeping a close eye at this point. T minus one hour, 18 minutes, 14 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. T minus one hour, eight minutes, 55 seconds and counting. Still go with Apollo 12 at this time. The spacecraft commander, Pete Conrad, completing his guidance and control checks, working with the spacecraft con test conductor here at KSC. The GNC checks, guidance and control checks of the spacecraft, still appear to be going well at this time. We are take, keeping a close eye on this weather front that's northwest of us. The forecast now is that there could be a very good possibility of having rain in the launch area uh, at a launch time. We'll continue to keep a close eye on the status of this weather front uh, to determine whether it will interfere with our launch plan. Right now we are still counting and we're still aiming toward our plan T0 at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. One hour, eight minutes, six seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control at 58 minutes, 56 seconds and counting. We're into the last hour of the Apollo 12 countdown and with the exception of that weather front that we're keeping a close eye on, all still going well with the countdown. The crew at the 320-foot level is uh, ready to uh, depart from the White Room on call. They've performed all their final checks. In the meantime, here in the firing room, we've completed some of the launch vehicle final telemetry checks, and uh, astronaut Pete Conrad, still working with spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin, on the final guidance and control checks. These are 
final refinements of the instrumentation used for that stabilization and control system and the guidance and navigation system that is vital uh, during the time of flight that the astronauts are in space and of course in lunar orbit. Our testing is going well. Uh, we understand that the rain line on this uh, weather front is probably about eight miles west of us and we're just going to keep a close eye on it as the countdown proceeds. In the meantime, the Vice President of the United States now has arrived in the firing room, and we understand the President of the United States, Air Force One, his aircraft is now in the area, and the President is expected to land shortly. Our countdown still proceeding. We're still aiming toward 11.22 a.m., keeping a close eye over our shoulder to the northwest for that weather front to see whether it will have any effect on our launch attempt here at the open, uh, opening of the window. We're now at T minus 57 minutes, 22 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn launch control. We've just passed the 49 minute mark in our countdown. We're now at T minus 48 minutes and 53 seconds and counting. The count is going well, but the weather appears to be deteriorating. However, we are still counting. The front that has been northwest of us appears to be coming in. We'll be standing by the launch director, Walt Caprian, getting direct reports on the weather, and if any determination is made, it will be announced immediately. In the meantime, we are still counting at this time. Pete Conrad has uh, completed his guidance and control checks in the spacecraft and made some uh, verifications of the entry monitoring system, one of the uh, systems that would be used on a re-entry either from an abort condition or the normal re-entry uh, from their flight to the moon and back uh, some 10 days after liftoff. We'll be keeping a close eye on the weather as the countdown proceeds. Coming up on the 48-minute mark now, we have a report that the President of the United States has arrived aboard Air Force One at Patrick Air Force Base. Uh, coming off the plane at about 10.29 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and is on his way uh, with Mrs. Nixon by a helicopter to the Kennedy Space Center. We'll be standing by, particularly keeping a close watch on the weather as far as the count is concerned. The Apollo 12 spacecraft and that Saturn V launch vehicle at Pad A all still going well at this time. 47 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. This is launch control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus 43 minutes, 56 seconds and counting. Uh, the launch director is still uh, receiving advisories at this time on the weather status. We expect determinations to be made shortly on what our plan will be. One possibility will be, if required, to hold the countdown at the 24 minute mark, but this exact determination has not been made, repeat, has not been made at this time. As far as the status of the Apollo 12 astronauts are concerned, that determination also will be made if a hold is required, whether or not the crew will remain on board. We'll stand by for these decisions, and as soon as these are made, they will be passed on to you. We are standing by at this time. The count's still uh, going at this point, and all still well with all technical phases of the count. 43 minutes, six seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus 38 minutes, 56 seconds and counting. Still proceeding, the countdown clock still going at this time. Our weather conditions are just about the same. Basically, we're in a touch and go condition at this time. Standing by for continuing reports on the progress of this weather front and how it's going to affect us uh, about uh, 35 minutes from now or 38 minutes from now at the projected T0 time of 1122 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If a hold is necessary, it will be declared perhaps about the 24-minute mark. However, we are going to keep an eye on it as the countdown continues. It appears that if the, we do have to hold for this front, the time element would be such that uh, it's possible the Apollo 12 crew may elect to remain in the spacecraft. Obviously, if uh, the, the front was more severe, with lightning involved, the crew would be removed. No decision has been made on this at this time, and uh, this matter is uh, still up in the air at this time because the clock is still moving and we're still standing by for further reports. We're 37 minutes, 50 seconds and counting. This is launch control.
This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the 30-minute mark in our countdown. We're now at T-minus 29 minutes, 54 seconds, and counting. The countdown for Apollo 12 still going at this time. Project officials are still keeping a close eye on this weather front that has moved into the area more rapidly than anticipated earlier this morning. The weather front actually speeded up a little later in the morning. A determination has been made to continue this countdown at least down to the 10-minute mark in the count. We'll be getting recurring reports on weather conditions as we continue, and determinations will be made. We will count at least to the 10-minute mark and either hold at that point or, if conditions are such, continue still aiming toward our planned liftoff at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Apollo 12 crew of astronauts Pete Conrad, Dick Gordon, and Alan Bean aboard the Apollo 12 spacecraft up there at the 320-foot level of the pad have been informed of this uh, decision, and they are in accord, and our countdown continues. The Apollo access arm, swing arm number nine, that up to this time has been attached to the spacecraft, now has been moved to its standby position some 12 degrees or six feet from the spacecraft. In the event that we uh, had an emergency egress situation, this swing arm could be brought back rapidly so that the astronauts could depart. Our countdown is continuing at this time, and we are standing by keeping a close watch on weather conditions. T-minus 28 minutes, 25 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've passed the 24-minute mark in our countdown. Now T-minus 23 minutes, 53 seconds, and counting. Still counting at this time all aspects of the flight, with the exception of weather, looking very good. We have no problems other than this weather front that is upon us. The countdown continuing. We will count, if we can, down to the 10-minute mark at least, uh, where a final determination will be made. At this time in the spacecraft at the 320-foot level, the command module pilot, astronaut Dick Gordon, sitting in the middle seat, completing some final checks of the reaction control system of the spacecraft. These are those thrusters that are used to enable the spacecraft to maneuver in space. We pressurize the propellants uh, prior to launch to assure that they will work properly when required uh, on the flight to the moon. In the meantime, with the launch vehicle, we've made some uh, final checks of the Range Safety Command Destruct System. These are the destruct packages aboard the rocket that if the vehicle did fly off trajectory and became a danger to land areas, the vehicle uh, could be destroyed. Of course, this would occur after the astronauts were safely uh, separated from the faulty launch vehicle using that escape tower atop the vehicle. That escape tower also has been armed at this time. Our countdown still continuing, weather report still coming in, 22 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control.
Defense of Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T minus 18 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Countdown still proceeding at this time. Although it is touch and go at this time, we are still not below our minimum margins for launch. The countdown proceeding, as reported earlier, we do plan to count down to the 10 minute mark unless we get information prior to that time that would show us we could not go. Uh, the spacecraft commander, Pete Conrad, still appears to be very cheerful in the spacecraft as he reports back on the settings, the final settings of the stabilization and control system switches. These are the switch panels concerned with the propulsion system that is used in orbit and, of course, on the way to the moon for spacecraft maneuvers once the Saturn V launch vehicle has placed the spacecraft on its proper trajectory. We are conditioning the tanks of the third stage of the Saturn V launch vehicle uh, with uh, some super cold helium to prepare it uh, for engine ignition, which of course would occur during the powered phase of flight. Since that liquid hydrogen fuel must be maintained at 423 degrees below zero, we want to introduce a cold atmosphere to the tank itself and the engine chamber uh, so that that ignition will be proper when it occurs during the powered flight. Although we are uh, looking a little bad outside here at the present time, our countdown is still proceeding. We're giving reports to the astronauts on our status. They are performing their normal functions at this time as the countdown continues. Coming up in uh, several minutes, the spacecraft will go on full internal power with the fuel cells. We're now coming up on the 17-minute mark. Mark, T-minus 17 minutes and counting on Apollo 12. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus 14 minutes, 16 seconds, and counting. We are go on Apollo 12. We are aiming toward our planned liftoff at 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The countdown will continue. Our latest weather advisories are such that conditions are predicted to be acceptable for a launch attempt at 11.22 a.m. Although we do have rain in the area, our minimums are acceptable. 
The top of this weather front is at about 23,000 feet, and we have confirmation of very low turbulence concerned with this front. All of these matters related with many other determinations concerned with our mission rules, the launch director, Walt Caprian, has given a go to continue the count. The astronauts have been given this word. They're busy in the spacecraft at this time because the spacecraft has just gone on full internal power with the fuel cells. Up to this time, we had been sharing the load of the power of the spacecraft with the, an external power source. The astronauts also are making their final readouts on the stabilization and control system with Pete Conrad reporting back to the spacecraft test conductor, Skip Chauvin. The astronauts will arm their rotational hand controllers, those hand controllers that are used to perform the various maneuvers in space as the countdown continues. We'll be coming up shortly with some command uh, signals from Mission Control in Houston to assure that Houston will be able to send proper commands to the spacecraft once we have liftoff. Our countdown is proceeding 12 minutes, 42 seconds and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We've just passed the nine-minute mark in our countdown. T-minus eight minutes, 54 seconds, and counting. 
Right at this point, astronaut Tom Stafford here in the firing room is talking with Pete Conrad, bringing him up to date on the weather conditions. The weather conditions as reported on the last announcement, that is we have a top of this weather front of about 23,000 feet, a very low uh, turbulence associated with it. Pete Conrad has just reported back, sounds good to him. Our count still proceeding at this time as uh, Pete Conrad reports back to uh, Tom Stafford. At this point also, Alan Bean, and the lunar module pilot in the right-hand seat, has given some up-to-date readouts on the status of our fuel cells, the power system for the spacecraft, and they've been recorded by the spacecraft checkout personnel. We've taken a look at the uh, lunar module for about 20 minutes. We powered it up at the T-minus 30-minute mark in the count, powered up all systems with the four batteries in the descent stage and the two batteries in the ascent stage. Uh, the lunar module, of course, which will have the call sign Intrepid when it separates from the command module in flight. Intrepid is go at this time, and we're now powering down the instrumentation. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin now performing his status checks with the personnel in the spacecraft control room. All report go at this time. The spacecraft ready light should be coming up shortly. We are still go at this time. Seven minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. This is Kennedy Launch Control. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus six minutes, 30 seconds and counting. We're still proceeding satisfactorily with our countdown at this time. The emergency detection system that can warn the astronauts of difficulties during the powered flight now has gone on its automatic sequence. We have power on with the EDS as the countdown continues. The spacecraft ready light is on, the EDS light is on, meaning the emergency detection system also is go as the countdown continues. The astronauts now standing by in the spacecraft. Coming up shortly will be some status checks here in the firing room. This is Kennedy Launch Control. Still go with Apollo 12 at 5 minutes, 52 seconds and counting. Apollo Saturn Launch Control, T-minus five minutes and counting. T-minus five, that swing arm number nine, it will now be coming back to its fully retracted position at the pad. Mark, the swing arm now moving back from the spacecraft as planned at the five minute mark in the count. Just before coming up on the swing arm removal, we went through our final status checks and received a loud and strong go from the mission director, Chet Lee, launch operations manager, Paul Donnelly, and launch director, Walt Caprian, responding to the request from the test supervisor. The lights now will be coming on on the abort panels of astronaut Pete Conrad. These are his Q lights for the five engines in the first stage. These five lights remain on. When we get proper thrust for liftoff, the lights go out informing the spacecraft commander that he has good thrust beneath them. We're coming up now on the four minute mark. Pete Conrad reports his lights are on. Spacecraft test conductor Skip Chauvin has said, have a good trip, Pete. Pete reported back, uh, we appreciate everything everyone has done. Four minutes and counting, still proceeding at this time. We'll be coming up on our automatic sequence 
at three minutes and ten seconds in the countdown. We're going through our final Astro Launch checks at this time as the countdown continues. During these checks just now, the launch operations manager, Paul Donnelly, said to Pete Conrad, the launch team wishes you good luck. May the wind be always behind you. Pete Conrad said, thank you very much. Count still continuing. Final checks of the guidance and navigation system going on now. Pete Conrad reporting back on their status. We'll be coming up on the automatic sequence in about 10 seconds. From that time on down, we're completely automatic, leading up to 8.9, the 8.9 second mark in the count when we get the ignition sequence. Mark, firing command. Launch sequence start. We have the firing command. We're on automatic sequence. T minus three minutes and counting. T minus three. Once the automatic sequence began, we begin pressurizing those big fuel and oxidizer tanks, the overall propeller tanks, in the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle. This will lead us up to 8.9 seconds when the engine ignition sequence begins. The five engines in the first stage will ignite, building up 7.6 million pounds thrust total. This should occur at the zero mark in the count. We will get verification through the computer that we have proper th thrust. The hold down arms will release and will be off with Apollo 12. Two minutes, 20 seconds and counting at this time. Two minutes, 10 seconds at this time. We see that the stages are now beginning to pressurize as our countdown proceeds. Coming up on the two minute mark in the count. T minus two minutes and counting, T minus two. Spacecraft commander now has placed the, emer the environmental control system of the spacecraft on internal. Up to this time, we've been providing external sources for the environmental control system. We've, we're checking the hydraulics of the first stage of the launch vehicle now. We are still go. One minute, 40 seconds and counting at this time. T minus 90 seconds and counting, T minus 90, still go. Our status board here in firing room two indicates all is still well with the countdown. Third stage tanks now pressurized as the automatic sequence continues. One minute, 15 seconds and counting. Captain Alan Bean has just brought the entry batteries on the main power source in the spacecraft. We've conserved those batteries up to this time. We're coming up on 60 seconds. Mark, T minus 60 seconds and counting, T minus 60. Alan Bean running up the volume on his VHF. 50 seconds and counting, 50. We've now gone internal power with the launch vehicle. We're on the internal batteries in the three stages of the Saturn V. T minus 40 seconds and counting. The spacecraft commander now performing his final function, pressing a button to align the guidance and control system of the spacecraft. Coming up on 30. Mark, T minus 30 seconds and counting, T minus 30. 25 seconds and counting, we're still proceeding. T minus 20. 17 seconds, swing arm back. We have guidance in general. 10, 9, 8, ignition sequence start, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all engines running, commit, liftoff, we have liftoff, 11.22 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Pete Conrad reports that your program is in, tower clear, we are, I got a picture of the roll program and this baby is really going. Pete. Pete Conrad reporting the roll and pitch program to put Apollo 12 on the proper course. Altitude at one half mile. Roll complete. Roger, Pete. Clocks and sync flight. 40 seconds. Mark one Bravo. Altitude a mile and a half now. Velocity 1,592 feet per second. Where's got your GDC? Okay, we just lost the platform, gang. I don't know what happened here. We had everything in the world drop out. 
Roger. Plus one. Three fuel cell lights and AC bus light. Fuel cell disconnect. AC bus overload. One and two. Main bus A and B out. How's it, how's it looking, Ecom? Ecom, what do you see? Flight Ecom, try SCE to off. Say again, SCE to off. Off. SCE to off. Auxiliary point. SCE to Aux, Capcom. What Apollo 12 Houston, try SCE to Auxiliary, over. NCE to Auxiliary. SCE, SCE to Auxiliary. What panel, Acom? We got it back, boy, looks good. Okay. Ecom reports the readings okay, back. Go down by one Charlie. Roger. Mark, one, Mark Charlie. one Charlie. Staging status. Three one Charlie. Charlie. Flight Director Jerry Griffin taking a staging status now. Apollo 12 down ran, range 17 miles. Altitude 20 miles. Apollo 12 Houston, try to reset your fuel cells now. Head inboard out, flight. We're looking good. Inboard engine out on schedule. Okay, he's working. Altitude 33 miles, downrange 45 miles. Okay. Stay good, right? Stay on the left. Got a good S2, gang. Roger, we copy, Pete. You're looking good. Good staging and good thrust on the second stage. We're out our problems here. I don't know what happened. Uh, I'm not sure we can get hit by lightning. Thrust is good, Frank. Roger. Your thrust is looking good, Pete. Okay, I have a good GDC, and Al has got the fuel cells back on, and we'll be working on our AC buses. Right, Pete, your uh, fuel cells look good down here. Confirmed second plane. Think we need to do a little more all-weather testing. Amen. Flight side. Here goes the tower, gang. That's all right, Queen. Good show, Pete. You're in mode two. Launch escape tower has been jettisoned on schedule. We're go, flight. And we confirm the engine skirt separation also. Birds, that's good. Of course, the platform looks like to you. Downrange 122 miles, altitude 61 miles, velocity 10,000 feet per second. Okay, uh, we've got uh, an ISS light on, and we've got a cycling CO2 partial pressure high, which I don't bother me particularly, and we have reset all the fuel cells. We have all the buses back on the line, and we'll just square up the platform when we get into orbit. Roger, Pete. That sounds good. Flight I'm looking good here. Hey, that's one of the better sims, believe me. We've had a couple of cardiac arrests down here, too, Pete. There wasn't any time for that up here. Uh, negative flight. There's nothing to do with but we've got a good uh, clock running here, and uh, correct me, I'm going to give you a mark at 4 plus 30. I've lost my event timer. And, um, mark, 4 plus 30. Looks good, Pete. Okay, we're all organized again, Jack. Yeah, I think we've lost now, the ISS, so number one ball will just drift all over the place, and we'll have to catch it later. Roger, Dick. Like, uh, Let that the GMC guys think about how we're going to get that thing, because it's just drifting this boat. Okay, we're thinking. Right. Capcom flight, go. Since we don't have the platform, we won't make an S4B to COI call, and uh, any mode 4 would be on the uh, backup. Trajectory is right down the lines on the plot okay. board. Altitude is 85 miles now. Houston, we won't be sending you an S4B to COI call. Okay, I understand, and uh, can you give us some good words like, uh, let's uh, uh, get the, the disky, I mean the IMU calm down, is rolling all over the place. Okay, Pete, uh, and if you do a mode 4, it'll be on the backup. Yeah, no, so I got a good uh, SES. Okay, good show. I got a little uh, vibration of some kind, uh, she's checking along here, minding her own business, though. Okay, Pete. Could that just be his FDAI? Negative, but I think it is the platform. We're reading it out here, too. Velocity is 13,500 feet per second now. Altitude 92 miles. Apollo 12 downrange 345 miles. Roger 12. Go fight. Capcom level sense arm 8 plus 37, cut off 9 plus 1 1. Okay. 
Apollo 12, Houston, level sense arm, 8 plus 3, 7. Cut off, Niner plus 1, 1. Okay, here comes the gimbal motor. The level sense arm initiates the staging sequence. That will be at 8 minutes, 37 seconds. We're at 625 now. Stand by S4B to orbit. Right here. Flight gimbal's on. Roger. Mark, S4B to orbit. Mark, S4B to orbit. S4B to orbit. The S4B now has the capability to put the Apollo 12 spacecraft into orbit should uh, something happen to the second stage. Three and three. Why do you want to do it at the platform now? We'll get you an answer in just a second flight. Best hurry. Uh, tell him how good his IU is doing. That might make him feel better. Yeah, tell him he's right on the trajectory. No problem, sir. Apollo 12, Houston, you're right smack dab on the trajectory. Your IU's doing a beautiful job. Okay, uh, we're all chuckling up here over the lights. We all said there were so many on, we couldn't read them. Sliding, go. Yeah, we need Omni Delta. Downrange 557 okay, miles now. 12, Houston, uh, give us Omni Delta. Roger, go on Omni Delta. Altitude 100 miles, velocity 18,417 yeah. feet per second. Center engine. Center engine out on schedule. IMU power to stand by and into on. You expect that'll stop it? Well, it should start the 90 second cage cycle. Okay, Capcom, IMU power to stand by then to on. Apollo 12, Houston, uh, we can start getting that platform squared away. Uh, go IMU power, stand by and then back to on. We'll get her caged up. Staging status. Booster, go with your test view shift, right? Looks good. Roger. Uh, we'll out. wait till we get through staging here. Thank you, sir. Okay, as soon as you can reach it, that's the way to go. Capcom, we'll go for staging. Apollo 12, Houston, go for staging. Roger, we'll go for staging. Flight throttle. Go. One more time, mode four call. Okay, if you want the LMP to turn off the CNN power and then bring it back on, and you want me to use my IMU cage switch, is that right? Stand by. Stand by on that, Pete. What you want, GNC? I couldn't copy the flight. He asked if you wanted the LMP to, to pull the power completely off and back on, or do you want him to use the second stage engine shutdown as predicted for 9 minutes 11 seconds. We're at 9 minutes now. Okay, let's get him after staging. Did I read that S, uh, S4 or Mo4 is going to be late? Got a good S4B, nice smooth staging. Thrust okay. Bro. Roger, Peach, your thrust looks good. Okay, give us some more words on the IMU now. Okay, Capcom, stand by. It looks like we, if, if he can't get that switch until we Velocity's get the... Velocity is 23,000 feet uh, per second. Can we have LMP Downrange, 967 miles. Altitude, 102 miles. About, stand by, man, Pete, we're still talking. Okay. Fine guys, it's the first. Flight that's kind of hard on the IMU. Well, it's probably just as hard to have it talking yeah. around. Good trajectory, good thrust. Get any power off the IMU that you can right now, whatever circuit breaker they can reach. Okay, but what is that? Standby mode four. Mark mode four. Mark mode four. Mark mode four. Roger mode four. Mode 4, Apollo 12 could get into orbit now using the service propulsion system. How about a course of line? Can we feed something into the disky? African overflight. GNC? Downrange 1156 miles. Velocity is 24,157 feet per second. Altitude 103 we'll miles. Going through the disky? Flight, can they reach panel five circuit ready? Should be able to. Hey, I'll tell you one thing, it's a first class ride, Houston. Kind of a rough start. Yeah. You got to really just start up 98 ball and get in. Shut off 11 plus, 3 5. 
11 plus 3, 5. Estimating cutoff at 11 minutes 35 seconds. 1-1 one, one plus 3-5. Three, 1-1 five. One, one plus 3-5, roger, roger. Flight GMC, Dell, they should be able to pull the main A, main B circuit breakers on panel 5. Okay. Cleared Africa. Shut down, 1 plus 3, 3, Houston. Roger, Pete. Okay. Flight Fido looks good. Roger. Flight Dynamics report, it looks like a Just good dormant. Exact circuit Showing velocity 25,561 feet per second. You want to pull those? Downrange 1,450 yeah, miles. What? You really want to do that? We're almost to a point. Flight Fido, we go. It's now. Fido says we're go. They're, they're probably going to be a little while getting to it, though, while they're cleaning up the cockpit. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and have him pull those circuit breakers. Apollo 12, Houston. Uh, before you get uh, down there to work on that uh, switch, uh, try pulling on panel five your IMU main A and main B breakers. Flight GMC. Okay, we're Fido flight. Uh, Agree, go. Your S4B is safe. Your S4B is safe now. Stand by. You got a go orbit. Okay. You got a go orbit. You're looking good. What do you want him to do next? That's Capcom Jerry Carr talking Stand by. He's gonna have to go through the lineman here. GMC flight. GMC. When he gets around to aligning, you just want him to put those circuit breakers back in and cycle what? Cycle that power switch the way you said? The backup right, crew like commander, Dave Scott, is also at the Capcom that. console here. Okay, we can get that over Canary. Flight booster, go. Saturn's configured for orbit, we'll go. Roger. Capcom telling that S4B looks good, configured for orbit. Flight photo, okay. 12 Houston, your S4B is looking good, you're configured for orbit. 025 by 100. Roger, Houston. Capcom, my orbit's 102.5 by 100. Roger, 12, your orbit is 102.5 by 100. Who's that doing, loser? Okay, Capcom, tell them we'd like to leave those circuit breakers out at least uh, three minutes. Uh, uh, Houston, be advised that I am resetting on the stabilization control system logic bus A3-4 breaker, which was out for some reason. Uh, Roger, Pete, uh, we copy. Also on your IMU main A and B breakers, uh, let's leave them out for at least three minutes. Okay, and then what do you want us to do? Reset them and come up with a P-51 when we get in the darkness? That's probably right. That, that looks like the right plan, plan Pete. Pete uh, we're still talking. We'll give you a final on it. Flight guys. Okay, we're ready to go. I think we got hit by lightning. Aries now, in case you didn't have one. We don't have any good telemetry, so we can't tell yet. We haven't saved it and gotten it in yet. We, we're getting yeah, you think his rest map could be? Well, we don't bad. know yet. We're trying to find out. We don't okay. know that he has one. Now. Okay. Well, Houston, we're about 45 seconds from LOS. We'll pick you up, Canaries, in about 1-6. Roger, roger.